While the term proprioception is not an everyday term familiar to most parents, it certainly is if your child's struggling with any sort of motor tone and development issues, a weak core, delayed walking or talking, sensory processing disorder, autism spectrum disorder, and maybe even ADHD and anxiety. Because at the core of all of those neurodevelopmental challenges in kids are issues with proprioception. So today you're gonna to learn what proprioception is, how important it is to the developing brain of children, and even us as adults, and how it gets thrown offline and out of whack by early childhood stressors and injuries that often come as a result of birth interventions like C-section, induction, forceps and vacuum assisted deliveries, or falls in early childhood. This video is for parents of children who are struggling with any issues that have to do with motor function, motor tone and coordination, sensory processing, speech delays, and so forth. And it is most especially for parents who already have their children in common therapies, like PT and OT and speech therapy, and are either plateaued and not further seeing results, or they just aren't seeing them as fast and completely as they would like. So in this video, we'll break down proprioception, motor tone, motor development, and the role that this vital function plays in sensory processing, behavioral and emotional regulation, focus and memory, and so, so much more. Many of you have heard my daughter Ren's story before about how her birth ended with a vacuum assisted delivery. There is no doubt that this intervention was absolutely necessary for her and for me, but it wasn't without its negative effects. Sure, she had some pretty significant cranial swelling going on, but that's pretty typical for vacuum use. And what we didn't know right away though was how much damage was done to her brainstem and her vestibular system. Ren had a rotational preference early on in infancy where she preferred to turn her head one way more than the other, but that cleared up quickly after just a few adjustments. It really wasn't until she turned a year old and still wasn't anywhere close to walking that we started to have some suspicions about her motor development. So when Ren finally did start to walk at 15 months, she moved like a drunken bull. No exaggeration, she would be standing perfectly still and balanced and she would fall flat on her back, just like someone pushed her over. I'm not talking a little topple over, right? It happened all the time. This poor girl was so bruised up. It was no wonder she didn't feel safe enough to move through her motor skills. It was absolutely bizarre for Kyle and I to watch, I and mean, it really wasn't until we invested in insight scans for our office that we discovered that Ren had a subluxation pattern in her upper neck that's literally named the scrambler due to its counter torquing pattern at the brainstem. It made perfect sense. No wonder she had zero spatial awareness. Her proprioceptive and vestibular systems were so jammed up and underactive. So as chiropractors, we were frustrated that we missed this, especially on our own child. But these are things that can't be seen by eye alone or any sort of physical assessment. This could only be seen on her scans. Obviously, we got to work on a care plan with her to clear out that subluxation pattern. And long story short, she's climbing, tufa jumping, running, rolling around now just like any three-year-old should. But her story could have looked so very different had we not trusted our instincts and just taken a closer look. So let's get sciency for a moment here. Proprioception is our body's sixth sense, right? It sends information and input into the brain about the body's position in space. So where are we? How are we moving? Our spatial orientation, coordination, motor tone, and so, so much more. While we may not consciously think about it, proprioception is absolutely essential for basic everyday tasks, such as walking, writing, even reaching for an object and not overshooting it. So for a developing child and even a teenager, this optimal brain development, function, regulation, and more, those are all dependent on proprioception. And if that's not there, you can imagine how frustrating daily life can be as they're unable to perceive their environment appropriately. The reality just, it isn't matching. So if proprioception is decreased or altered, it is highly correlated with the four main neurological conditions that children struggle with today. We're talking autism, sensory processing, ADHD, and anxiety, as well as epilepsy, epilepsy and seizures as well even. The most common injury that alters proprioception and therefore all neurological control of motor tone and coordination is by far birth intervention and trauma because it causes physical injury directly to that brainstem, the cerebellum, and the vagus nerve which controls and coordinates that proprioceptive input. Trauma to these areas leads to something called subluxation and in the case of proprioception, we most often are looking at subluxation in the upper cervical area, right at the base of the skull. 
Subluxation in and of itself has three main parts. The first is a misalignment or a shift in that neurospinal system. And that if, the, if left untreated or uncorrected, that becomes fixated and stuck in that position, which will decrease proprioceptive input. Usually, normal unrestricted motion within that neurospinal system is what feeds that proprioceptive information into the brain. And the last component of subluxation is neurological interference, imbalance, and dysfunction. That's the mechanism of how trauma to the upper cervical spine can affect the body's proprioceptive ability and can lead to deeper challenges down the road with the ADHD, SPD, and behavior challenges. We can actually measure this with our scans. So while PT and OT exams, they'll put your child through a series of movement and coordination tests to measure that proprioceptive function and motor tone, but we can actually look even deeper into the root cause of motor tone issues with our neurological insight scans, most especially the EMG scan. This scan in particular shows us where in the nervous system we have too much or even too little stuck energy. It tells us objectively numerically how much or how little energy there is. And then lastly, how organized or how disorganized that energy is that's going on in the brain. It looks like this right here. You can see all of the energy, where it is, and how much it is. So once we have these uh, neurological scans done, we can pinpoint exactly where that subluxation and altered proprioception is, and then make what are called neurotonal adjustments to the body. These are literally designed to get rid of that subluxation pattern that increases and improves proprioceptive input into the brain and into the central nervous system. If you suspect that your child may be struggling with proprioceptive issues and related conditions and you're just not seeing results as fast or completely as you'd like with PT and with OT alone, check out the link below to learn more about neurologically focused chiropractic care. It is so often the missing link in helping kids to improve their proprioception and just overall neurological development. Please ask us any questions that you may have, send us a DM, please share this information with other parents family, Facebook groups who need this, then give us a call and get some scans done on your kiddo. We can help.